Hey everyone, here is another video I did for the National Post's Comment Nation video series. This one is about everyone's favorite topic, free speech. Libraries across Canada celebrated Ban Book Week recently. They piled little tables full of great works of literature that someone at some point had found controversial in some way, so that we could all feel smug and superior about how far we've come. But did you know that the government of Canada is still banning books to this day? And all sorts of other media too? Canadian Tariff 9899 bans books and movies and TV shows and DVDs and CDs and photographs and any other work of media that contains themes that the government deems hateful or terroristic or seditious or obscene. See, the Canadian Criminal Code says it is a crime to engage in speech that is considered hateful or terroristic or seditious or obscene, so obviously the government cannot have us importing materials that encourage that sort of behavior. How do border guards determine what shouldn't be allowed in? Well, Ottawa has written these long, elaborate rule books to help them determine what sort of content is not allowed, and every day border guards sift through content to make sure that none of the stuff runs afoul of the rules. This might strike you as a serious infringement of free speech, and it is, but the situation gets a little bit more complicated when you look at what sort of stuff the government is actually banning. The Canadian government is required to keep detailed lists of every book, movie, or CD, or whatever that they declare inadmissible, and when you look at these lists, you tend to see that what they're mostly confiscating is the absolute worst of the worst. Like books by actual Nazis and white supremacists, where every single second word is like a racial slur books that explicitly advise killing people, and really, really sick pornography involving, like, incest or animals. They confiscate a lot of that. When we talk about threats to free speech these days, we tend to talk about polarizing campus speeches or politically incorrect opinions. You know, some famous person says something sort of mildly controversial and gets shouted down by, like, really hysterical, over-the-top ideologues. This sort of thing leaves the impression that standing up for free speech is actually pretty easy since the good guys and bad guys are so obvious. But in reality, the most serious tests of free speech involve our willingness to tolerate ideas that are so monstrous and offensive and horrible we do not want to get within a thousand feet of them. Ideas like the stuff that the border guards confiscate. The problem with debates over rights is that they tend to be pretty self-centered. People imagine themselves to be free speech freedom fighters because they are willing to fight to prevent the censorship of books or opinions that they personally like, or at least willing to tolerate. But that's not really going all the way. Being a free speech absolutist also means you have to be willing to stick up for forms of speech that are like a million miles away from your own moral universe. Videos of adult actors or cartoon characters engaged in the most twisted, horrific sorts of sexual acts, for instance, or vicious terrorist propaganda just brimming with the most blatantly racist, evil messages and slogans. Not many people are willing to stick up for that. And that is why censorship survives. Few people are willing to stand up for the often disgusting reality of what an absolute right to free speech looks like in practice. Sure, it feels satisfying to fight for the right of our favorite political pundit to speak or our favorite book to be in the library, but when it comes to standing up for the truly twisted, all of that principled courage is suddenly in very short supply. And thus, the great Canadian tradition of banning books at the border continues. I hope you enjoyed that. In the thing below, I've got a link to the National Post's other Comment Nation videos, along with a column I wrote for National Review talking about Canada's book banning laws in more detail. Another video will be coming very shortly. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you soon.